Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brendan and if you're new here, it is great to have you. This is going to be our one-stop shop for everything crypto related. And man, did we have a crazy day in the markets today. Bitcoin hit another all-time high, conveniently of $69,000 today. Some would say it is quite the psychological resistance level. But following this, Bitcoin saw about a 9% sell-off all the way back down to about $62,000, $63,000. Now, what I want to do in today's video is talk about where the key levels of support on Bitcoin are, where it's most likely to fall to, will it continue to keep falling, or are more all-time highs just around the corner? Because this wasn't too large of a breakout. Again, we had this previous all-time high area sitting at about $67,000. We broke above this by about $2,000, but didn't see too much of a run-up. So can the next breakout that's coming to Bitcoin be significantly bigger than this? Will the rest of cryptocurrency and the altcoins follow? Let's go ahead and break this down and explain what's happening on this beautiful chart. Now again, Bitcoin saw a pretty nice sell-off after hitting that $69,000 range. And I want to take a brief look at what's happening across the board because what we're seeing here is that most of the altcoins have followed Bitcoin in this downward move. While some are still very well up on the week, like Binance Coin, even Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, as well, a lot of the altcoins are down between 5 and 10% on the day. One of the biggest losers actually being Shiba Inu. They're down 10% on the day and 12% still on the week. Uh, and you have Polkadot, which is also down. But Obviously, Shiba Inu has seen tremendous growth in the past couple of weeks. It's not a big deal that it's down 20, 10, excuse me, 10 to 12 percent after being up, you know, a thousand percent. Same sort of thing with Dot. Dot seeing tremendous growth. It's not the end of the world. And while these numbers do look a little bit scary, uh, in hindsight, we have to remember that most of these coins that are down 10 plus percent have probably seen an increase of 50 to 100 to even more than that in the in the weeks prior to this. But going back to this Bitcoin chart, there's a couple of key areas that are going to be just crucial for where we are at right now. The first one is I want to go ahead and zoom out and talk about the previous all time high, because what we're seeing here is on two different uh, levels. We're seeing previous resistance now turned into support for Bitcoin. So right above my head over here, we have the previous all time high of just around sixty four, sixty five thousand dollars. And what we saw is that this was tested as resistance prior to this. So what we're seeing is that this is now turned into support. Quite the significant resistance level now being turned into support is ultimately a bullish thing in my opinion. Now we also have the micros. What's happening in the immediate time frame of Bitcoin in the immediate past couple of weeks, we're seeing the exact same thing on the micros and the macros. We have previous resistance now being used as support. If it was not being used as support, we would not see a daily candle nearly get retraced half of the way back up and get bought up. So what we're seeing is again, this is a good thing where people were previously selling Bitcoin, they are now comfortable buying it. And that's where the fundamentals and technicals kind of intertwine here. So with Bitcoin um, seeing these previous uh, resistance turn into support, I do see that as a bullish thing. Once again, where people wanted to sell before, they are now very comfortable buying. And we're seeing that uh, as a very evident case. What the deciding factor will be is we just started a new daily candle about two hours ago um, at the time of filming this, which is 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern time we will need to figure out <clears throat> where this daily candle wants to go. If this can get bought up and start going and close green, I think it'll be a really good sign that buyers are strong here and that they want to shoot for a new all-time high above 69,000, most likely above 70,000, probably shooting somewhere towards the mid-70s, uh, around $75,000 in my opinion. Now, one thing that's not unheard of is for Bitcoin to retrace back to its EMAs, which we have not done since, what was it? I think it was September of 2021. It has been quite the time since uh, Bitcoin has touched these EMAs. Again, it broke out of this towards the end of September, and we have not even touched the 50 EMA, which is this yellow band, since then. Again, not a big deal, but it is pretty common for Bitcoin to um, have these bigger falls, these larger moves downward, fall to one of these moving averages. And if it does, it typically bounces off one of them. So we have the 50 EMA, which is the yellow. We have the blue, which is the 100 EMA. And then we have the pink slash purple, almost magenta color one. Uh, that's going to be this, uh, this bottom one over here, which is going to be the 200. So it almost blends in with this, this pattern that we had which I think we can just honestly go ahead and, and erase. But 
if I was going to think that Bitcoin was going to fall to anywhere, we have to understand again, major resistance levels. We talked about the micros and the macros happening right around 64, 63,000. Now let's look at this and zoom out on even a bigger time scale. We saw massive amounts of resistance, even a head and shoulders getting painted the last time that Bitcoin hit this uh, mid $60,000 area. Ultimately, a very big downfall came. But now what we're seeing is that where people were very comfortable selling in the macro, in the large scale, people are now very comfortable buying. We are seeing upwards consolidation support where we were previously painting head and shoulders patterns. Uh, it's a thing that I think a lot of people are overlooking. And we, yes, Bitcoin is falling. Yes, it wouldn't be crazy to see Bitcoin fall to one of these EMAs, but it also wouldn't be crazy to see Bitcoin fall into 60 or even maybe sub $60,000. But there is so much buying pressure down there. I think the lower that Bitcoin goes and the closer that it gets to the support lines of the lower $60,000 range, that's really where I'm planning on doing a lot of my buying. If it does get below there or if it does get into this range, that's where I'm kind of seeing like the money signs come into my eyes and I want to do a lot of my buying. Um, Going back to this and kind of just recapping here, uh, major support levels are going to be for here, and I'm going to draw some lines. Uh, major support levels are going to be just around uh, mid to lower $60,000 ranges. Again, we can see that if we draw this, we can see that where we previously topped out, we're now using it as support over in this area. And where we previously peaked, we're now seeing this as a form of almost support. So that's one of the most bullish things for me. We still have plenty and plenty of support if it wants to keep falling. We are above well, and let me correct this, we are well above all of our moving averages. So would it be crazy for it to fall to one? Not at all. Um, MACD is looking pretty neutral for the time being. We just came off of a pretty nice bullish divergence. The RSI on the daily time scale is pretty neutral as well. You could argue that this is a lower swing high right here, and maybe there is a little, a little bit of bearish divergence, which is playing out. I have been thinning out my crypto uh, positions and portfolio, especially as we are hitting these all time highs. I want to buy the dips here, um, and I want to make sure that I always have capital on hand. Uh, especially when we're at all time highs, right? You know, buy the dips, ride it to all time highs, layer out as we keep going. And I'm not speaking for anyone, I'm speaking for myself here. Um, but that's kind of the way that I'm playing this. Um, on a three day, we can do a quick three day check. Uh, three day is showing maybe a little bit of bearishness, uh, potential actual double bearish divergence on the three day. And on the RSI, we are kind of hitting that oversold territory um, as we are kind of just playing along that line right now, not actually in it yet. So this is actually a pretty unique thing because the fact that we're not even in this, um, and this might be a, a whole separate video, but what could very well happen is we come over here, set a higher swing low, and then really see ourselves start ripping. Um, and I would imagine that if this does play out like we have seen it in the past, again, this goes all the way back to 2018 over here. Uh, if this continues to play out the way that it will, I would imagine that this chart leads it to a $100,000 price for Bitcoin, a well over a $5,000 price for Ethereum, um, and a lot of the altcoins should see a pretty cool market. But we'll save the altcoin talk for another video. I hope you did enjoy this. Hopefully you did find it insightful. There's a lot of stuff happening on this chart. I know it's been a video since, or excuse me, I know it's been a while since I have made a video. But uh, nonetheless, if you did enjoy this and you're new here, drop that like button, drop that subscribe button. Uh, I'd love to have everyone around. And if you enjoyed this video, um, I'm glad that you were able to make it here. But that's going to go ahead and wrap it up. We have plenty more videos like this coming out. And I will see you all in the next one.